Hi everyone and welcome back to our channel and welcome to A Day in the Life. We are starting here in my home in Surrey. As you can see, we are in my hallway. It's changed quite a bit since you we were last here. Still a building site, there's still protection, but I am so excited. These panels have been added since you last came. Um, you can see we've got the molding. If you watched our video, the last video, and I speak about bad paneling, this is good paneling. So I love the molding here. And then we've added this little panel of MDF, so it adds a bit more interest and it looks a bit more like authentic paneling. And then we've added a lime wash finish on top, which is a very labor intensive um, process. The decorators have been doing an amazing job. They've been here for two weeks now. Welcome to the updated hallway. Of course, the biggest change we've done in here is the panelling, which I am so happy with. I really feel like it's added a lot more character to the space. I'll show you what that looks like if we pan around. And then these wall lights are also new. These are wall lights from Jam, which I ordered months and months ago. Um, and I absolutely love them. The only thing I'm not happy with is the fact they've come with silver screws. So I'm gonna give them an email and see if they can replace those um, for a bronze color screw, because I feel like they do stand out. This is probably the side that's changed the most in terms of furniture. I'll just sit down here so you can see it. Um, first of all, beautiful antique chest of drawers. I replaced the Bernhardt sideboard that I had previously. Um, I felt that it was a bit too contemporary for the new vibe that I wanted in here, and I really wanted to lay it with some antiques. So this was an antique that I bought online, and what attracted me to this was the size of it. It's quite hard to find a really wide chest of drawers, um, but I definitely wanted drawers rather than cupboards because I feel like it's better for storage. And I also love the marble top, and I think the scale of this works so well with the jam mirror. This is one of their, I think it's called Lucanium Convex Mirror. And I've used this at Masterpiece before, and it normally goes above a fireplace because obviously it's quite a small mirror, it needs something that's quite grand in height, um, otherwise there would be a massive gap um, between the top of the sideboard and the mirror. So I think scale-wise that works really well. So I'll show you a bit closer up what this sideboard looks like. I mean, look at all the lovely graining on that. It's just amazing. I think that's called a tiger oak. There might be some experts out there that can tell me for sure, but I'm pretty sure that's what that is. And I just love all the variation in the grain. I think that looks lovely. You can see even the brass inlay around the keyhole. And this is such an amazing piece of furniture. It's even got a little hidden drawer. Um, this section here, I kind of need two hands to do this. But this looks like it's just a piece of coving at the top, um, but that opens up with a hidden drawer. So you can put your secret stuff in there. And then I've dressed um, the chest of drawers quite simply. I normally have a bunch of flowers here, but it's Monday morning, I don't have time to get any. And then, rather excitingly, I've got obviously some photo frames on here, and this one is from our new Addison Ross collection. I'll just show you that one a bit closer up. Um, it's got this rattan texture, and we've done them in different colors. And you can see the frame is in this bronze color metal. I love how it's this combination of rustic and luxury. These frames launch on Thursday, the 3rd of November at 5 p.m. UK time. And I will be sharing the link on Instagram at the time, but I will also share the link in the description box below. There are six colors in total in this initial drop, although we're already planning more different colors. I love this tan color. And then we have one that we call Tweed. It has kind of a waxed tweed finish. Um, very similar to a Chanel jacket, I would say. The navy blue, which is such a classic. The wheat colour, which would look good in any interior and any colourway. This is the moss green, which I would describe more as a celadon green. It's a very light, elegant colour. And then finally the grey, which I think we've called Storm, which I just absolutely love and I think it's going to sell out straight away. So that's all the colours there all together. And then if we pan across to the staircase, I've got the same tables that I had previously. Nothing's really changed there. The orchids are still there in the antique stone urns that I've had for years. Celeste Rose Designs, who was in our autumn styling video, she, a few months ago, added some of these lichen-covered twigs 
um, for me, which I think really um, makes it a bit more rustic. Um, I love that. I love this paint finish because it kind of changes colour throughout the day. And I know some of you might ask me um, where this paint's from, but we couldn't find the right colour um, as it was. You know, I tried so many different tins. Um, I wanted something that wasn't going to be too dark. Normally with um, lime wash paint, the darker you go, the more you notice the texture and the patina that you get from it. Um, but I wanted something that was still going to be light and bright because I wanted the space to be as bright as possible. Um, so it was quite tricky. So in the end, we mixed, I think, two or three different colours together. I worked with um, Paragon Decorators. It wasn't an ad or a collaboration or anything, but they did such a great job. So I'll share their details in the um, description box below. But yeah, I'm really happy with that. So I'll take you upstairs, continue the tour. This mirrors Eglamise Mirrors by Stuart Fox. We installed that over 10 years ago when we first moved in. And here is another view of the panelling. God, I've just looked at the time, it's over 10 minutes this bit. Good luck editing this, Ollie. I'd love for you guys to tell me what you think in the comments. We're going to jump in the car and go to London. We're going to a beautiful project. I've taken you guys there before, I think. Yeah, you've been on quite a few site visits. Um, beautiful apartment, really, really grand proportions. We're nearing completion, the joinery is going in, so I'm really excited to see that. And then we're going to go over to Andrew Martin, and they've got a shop on Tottenham Court Road, and I'm going to be dressing the window, showcasing our new woodland collection of cushions and fabrics, and I've done a little room scheme with a bedroom, headboard, sofas, and I've picked some of their um, pieces from their other collections as well, so I'm excited to see that come together. So let's go, Ollie. I can't wait to get started, and we've got a lot to do. Follow me. So, so where are we at now? So we've just arrived to London, we're at our apartment project and I cannot wait to go and see the progress. So much has been happening um, since, definitely since you guys were last here. You're going to see a lot of changes, all the joinery is nearly in, all the marbles in, the flooring's down. So I can't wait to show you, come on in. So we're going to go past all the bedrooms because if you can't hear there's a lot of noise and chaos. And we're going to head down to the reception rooms and the kitchen first. The okay, first thing to see is the beautiful stone floor that we've done. It's a combination of three different stones. So you've got the border section and the medium tone with the detail and then the white. And the way we've laid this out, we'll share with you a um, design for this, is if you see the arches, we've kind of treated each section as a different room. So it's like this one will have a border with the section inside and then it will start again here. And what that does is where this is a very long, thin corridor, it kind of makes the space feel visually wider and not so long. So it feels more like a room, and especially once we dress it with furniture, it's gonna feel really opulent, but also very welcoming. So this beautiful piece of joinery we designed in-house, and this is gonna house a lot of storage. It's also gonna have some AV in here. And then this glaze section up here, the client loves to collect like ceramics and beautiful pieces of art. So we're gonna have a nice display area because it's got some lighting in there as well. Um, so it'll be a real sort of focal point for this room before you go through into the drawing room. Here, you can see the floor transitions from the marble into the wood. But you can see we've kept a bit of a geometric pattern. So when it transitions into the Versailles wood floor, it transitions quite subtly. I mean, how beautiful is this floor? Dan over here, come on, Dan, get on camera. Dan, um, you laid this with your own hands, didn't yes, you? That's yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah, amazing job. Really it's nice absolutely idea. beautiful. Actually, looks too good to be a floor. I don't want to step on it. And then this piece of joinery we designed to be um, where the TV unit's going to go. So you can see they've got space here for a TV unit. And then on top of this, we're going to have some doors that have got silk panels, all hand embroidered, chinoiserie from Fromental. And you can see in these little um, niches, this has got a plain silk background and we're going to have lights and this will be a little display area where we can put some beautiful objects, some photo frames, vases. And I love the combination of the dark wood with the marble. We don't often use marble on joinery pieces, but it really elevates it and makes it feel really special, especially when you have the carved um, ball nose as well. And then if you look at the panelling here, going back to my um, design things to not do, um, you can see it's even being considered the fact that the panelling should stop slightly shorter here where the base goes wider and then it steps back in to mirror the shape of the unit. 
And what that does is makes it feel like this unit was always part of the fabric of the building. It's always been here. It's not something that we've added on later. And it has like an awkward gap, because if you can imagine, if the moulding carried on here, this gap would be much bigger than this gap, and it wouldn't look right. So all these things, there's so much more detail than people ever appreciate when they come and see a project or they think about what an interior designer does. You have to analyse every last detail, like all of these things would have been drawn, discussed, had meetings on site as well, as Dayan well knows. Um, but when you get those details right, it just feels perfect. And that's what we want. It's much more traditional than anything we've done before. You know, I love classical interiors, I love antiques, I love traditional interiors. Because we've never done them before, it's interesting, like a lot of your clients come to you for the same, similar kind of styles that they've seen you do before. Whereas this client came to us and um, they're a married couple and she was much more contemporary, he was much more traditional and classical. And they liked the fact that we could marry the two. So it's so different from anything we've done before. Um, we'll share the CGI but I absolutely love it. I mean, it's just so much detail gone into here. It feels very layered. Um, and I think it's gonna be one of our best ever projects. So look at this. I mean, I love the material combinations, like this rich walnut wood. How beautiful is that? With the reader glass and the Armac Martin handles. That is just so stunning. And then we'll combine that with a lacquer finish. The client's original request and brief was that they wanted like an all white kitchen, but then they love um, these dark, warmer tone of wood. So we thought, why don't we marry those and it'll make it feel a little bit warmer. All white kitchens can feel quite clinical. And then we've got a cooker, a slightly more traditional cooker coming here. Um, and I just love this cooker hood that we had fabricated to our design. I mean, how beautiful is that? makes cooking more enjoyable looking at that. And then it's got all the niches up above um, that we'll have for display objects, like nice pots and things that you wouldn't actually want to use, but it just kind of look pretty. But you can see we've got storage that goes up really, really high because the ceiling height is so vast and we didn't want to lose any storage. We also wanted to make it feel like it was proportionate to the ceiling height. Um, but obviously you'd never be able to reach up there. I mean, I'm, I, don't, I think I'm like five, six or five, five. I can't even reach the handle. So what we're going to have on this wall is a custom made ladder. Um, it'll be in this finish with antique brass treads. And then that will go along um, where you can um, hook it onto the hanging rail and you'll be able to climb up there and access whatever you want. And then over on this section, again, we don't want to do too much drone. It's not the biggest space. So by mixing up all the um, wall units with this metal shelving unit, this is gonna have functional storage, um, but the fact that you can see through it, it makes it feel a bit more airy, a bit more spacious. Um, and then the sink's gonna be there, and the beautiful splashback. And I'll peel back the floor. Look at that. It's got a marble floor. What it lacks in size, it makes up for in detail and luxury. So I think this is gonna be an amazing kitchen. I can't wait to see it done. This is the guest load, and I have to say, I think this might be my favorite vanish unit we've ever designed. Um, again, really classical influences with the marble and the scallop shape. And then I love this fluting detail and with the metal legs. And then we haven't skimped out. We've got a metal, sh um, a marble shelf at the base as well. And then this is gonna have a drawer front that goes all the way across with the fluted timber. It's going to look amazing. And then on the walls, we have a chinoiserie by Fromental. It's going to look insane. So I'm going to really quickly whisk you past all these bedrooms. The only thing I want to point out is, you can see we've done this beautiful detail again with the single plank of wood floor. That's going to have a metal trim with the carpet like we did in that project in Knightsbridge. Um, but you can see this obviously a much um, warmer, darker wood than we um, did in that other project. We've done a big built-in um, window seat here. It's got integrated ventilation for the air conditioning and heating. There's a little fireplace there with an integrated TV. This will be a secret door through to their ensuite bathroom. Nothing much to see in there. This is the headboard detail where we're gonna have the um, oak leaf wallpaper from my collection of Fremantel. So excited to see that. Obviously we've seen it at Masterpiece already. Ollie will give you a little flashback on the screen of what that looks like. Um, but set into this timber frame, the beautiful um, veneer, that's going to really pop, it's going to look insane. 
And then through here, this gorgeous archway that we created, and you can see it's all clad in timber as you go through the arch that coordinates all the rest of the joinery. That's gonna be their dressing room, but it's all covered up and we can't uncover it because they've got the corners going in tomorrow. So that is the end of our really quick site visit. And now let's head over to Tottenham Court Road. We are at Andrew Martin. This is their Tottenham Court Road showroom. It's a huge space. It's only been open for six months. And um, so obviously they've got their headquarters in Walton Street. Here with David, channel regular. <laughs> um, and to celebrate the launch of our new Woodland collection, um, which they have loads of cushions and pieces of upholstery um, in the shop covered in this fabric collection we are doing a window display um, to showcase everything. So come with me and I'll show you where we are. They've put the majority of the pieces. So I designed this and all this, chose all the pieces and the fabrics probably about three months ago um, with a meeting with David at my office. Um, and they've put everything together. So I'm just here to make the final tweaks. We just made a change like Martin Waller the owner of Andrew Martin. He wanted a cow here, which is behind you there. Sorry, Martin, but I moved it. Um, so we've replaced it with these lovely rustic antique parts. Um, so these are all our cushions. This is some of my monogrammed linen from my collection with Coe's. You can see we've done a little monogram SPI. Um, and then you can also buy all the fabrics by the meter. So we've upholstered the headboard um, in one of the fabrics, which looks great. Then we have the throws. This was from our previous collection, but they're all still running. These have been selling really well. And then this fabric, this is the first time I've seen it upholstered. How gorgeous is this boucle? I mean, I love it. I'm actually getting a chair for Oscar's room at our house um, upholstered in this, um, but it just upholsters beautifully. It feels so nice to sit on as well. They've chosen all these um, pieces. I love these abstract paintings, actually. These are really cool. They feel very Kelly Wurstler, um, and they work really nicely with all the geometric prints, like this cushion. Um, and then we're just gonna make a few tweaks, like hopefully change these chairs, these very cool swivel chair. Um, the fabric that we wanted to upholster them in didn't come in time, and we might switch around these petrified logs which they're probably going to hate me for because these weigh an absolute turn, don't they? I think this will be like 70, 60, 70 kilograms each. So in the window display, we also have the brand new 26th edition of the interior design review from Andrew Martin, which we are in again. Um, always such an honor. Um, these are our pages. This is a beautiful project that we did, a townhouse in Kensington. And the Knightsbridge apartment, that was the one in Mayfair little girls bedroom in Knightsbridge um, and then a mix of different um, projects this is the Mayfair one again Knightsbridge such a lovely spread of our projects and you can buy this online um, I'll put a uh, link in the description box it's been my go-to book for years like before I was even an interior designer this book's been going for 26 years and um, so for as long as I've loved interior design I've been buying this book every year um, so to be in it now, um, amongst all those idols that I grew up with, is such an honour. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for commenting and following us. We really appreciate it. We're getting very close to that 100,000, so I'm really hoping we get there before Christmas. Um, if you'd like more regular updates, you can also follow us on Instagram, at Sophie Patterson Interiors, and also TikTok now, where we're sharing daily updates. But otherwise, we'll be back in a couple of weeks with our next one, and it's going to be a very good one with finishing two projects this week. I've got a really busy week this week. I'm going to go to London straight after this. We're completing a project in South Kensington. Beautiful townhouse. I haven't shared really anything about it on here. Um, and then we're flying to Portugal where we're completing an apartment project there as well. So that's some exciting content coming away and I can't wait to share it with you. See you soon.